we discover something in 2 Samuel 24 um, in the life of David about losing our grip, about losing our, our grip. We, we discover within, it's a great picture that, isn't it? <laughs> For those of you who are catching up, going, what's going on there? Um, David committed a sin in, in 2 Samuel 24 where he tried to take a census of the fighting men of Israel. Now, I've pondered this scripture for for a while, and I've wondered, well, why is it that God was so upset with this? And I think it's really to do with trying to say that some victories that God had brought, that David was somehow trying to attribute that to his own ability and man's strength. And so God was angry about this and said, you can't do this. And so what happens is that David in that passage is given um, choices about the kind of things that will outwork, the consequences that will outwork. And he's, um, God offers him through a prophet, says that you can have seven years of famine. Well, seven years of famine would mean the death of some in Israel, but actually the wealthy would survive famine because they would have resources to buy him food. Um, then he can have, uh, or he could have three months of fleeing enemies. And uh, this would be the death of some in Israel, but mostly soldiers. And actually, um, you know, it would be terrible. But the royal family in David's household probably wouldn't be touched. And, and then he was offered three days of plague in your land. And that would be the death of some in Israel, but anyone could be struck by that, be them royalty or, or nobility or anything else. You see, the thing is that um, he has tough decisions to make. He has decisions that will take him to a place where he has to, where God's looking at his heart and having to decide whether David is still fit to be king. And David chooses this idea of saying, well, I'm going to have the plague. Because what he realizes is this, that Sin in the camp affects everybody. It's, it's not an isolated thing. And actually, we discover that as a New Testament principle, that in 1 Corinthians 12, 26, when one part of the body suffers, every part suffers. So if you're struggling this morning and you say, well, I did something, and this is bringing back unpleasant memories for you already, because you're saying, Keith, I did something last week, or I did something last month, or I did something last year, or I did it 10 years ago, but I'm carrying a shame here that I can't really deal with, and you're now saying to me that I can deal with it, but let me tell you something, you know, the shame you feel, although you try and carry it in isolation, affects the whole body. And it affects the body in this way because we're not able to, to release you, to see you develop in, and to, to see your wonderful contribution that God has placed in your life affecting the church in this city. We're not able to see it, not because God is unwilling for that to come out, but because of the shame we feel we're unwilling to actually deal with it. Does that make sense? And so what we discover is David says in 2 Samuel 24 verse 14, David said to Gad, who's the prophet, he said, I'm in deep distress. Let us fall into the hands of the Lord for his mercy is great, but do not let me fall into the hands of men. And by this, David is saying, we'll have the three days of plague. He says, we'll have something that can potentially affect my household and, and not just the people because of what we've done before God. We'll make sure that we make restitution. He says, but don't let me fall into the hands of men because God, you're gracious, your mercy knows no end. But how often have we found that people, and I love people, I love being around people, I love, I'm energized by being around people. I think it's, you know, people are great. In fact, I like being around people so much I've decided to be a person. And so there's something wonderful about people. People are just intrinsically valuable because they're made in the image of God. And when they're saved, that's even better because then they become children of God. You can't be a child of God until you're saved. But you're still made in the image of God even if you don't know them. So there's something wonderful about people. But at the same time, people can be the most bigoted, can't we? Sometimes Christians are the worst. Sometimes Christians are the worst. And sometimes I've found, and this, this can be a word for, for some who are just you know, maybe struggling with this and saying, well, if you really knew what someone had done. Listen, my friends, God really knows what you did. So let's not play games here. If you know, if you know what I'd really done in my life, you wouldn't want to listen to my sermons. Yeah, don't congratulate yourself too much. If I'd known what you had done in your life, I wouldn't want to preach them to you. You see, we've got to understand 
that God is a forgiving God. And sometimes when people are hypercritical or condemning or saying, oh, that one should never be this, and, and I'll leave the church if that person's ever used in a ministry, often it's to cover up their own insecurity and their own unforgiven sin. Because if they've got an area in their life, I've often found this, if somebody protests too much about a thing, it often shows that they've got a similar root in their life that's never been dealt with. And all I can lovingly say to you if you're in that boat is come before God and ask him to heal. You know, treat people as Jesus treats you. That's really just a simple guideline. Treat people the way Jesus treats you, and actually, we'll all be much happier. But if you're sitting there this morning saying, I've got this shame in my life, I want you to know this morning that as we talk about regaining grip, as we talk through and say, you know, we want our ministry life tracks and all these things that we're starting in church and that are underway, and, and, and over a period of time, we'll change the way we do church. And you're thinking, I can never go on those kind of things because actually if, you know, my secret sin might come out. God is a respecter of secrets. You say, well, you know, one day you'll be sure and know your sin will find you out. Do you know, if God hasn't revealed it now, it probably is already that he's forgiven you already. And the issue here isn't God's forgiveness. The issue is you forgiving yourself. 